Okay, so Sunday morning, you just wake up, you have plans ahead with your friends, like a movie, a uh, lunch, going out to, some, going out to like, play some games, and you get a text on your phone from your girlfriend or, or boyfriend, and it says, we need to talk. So, when you see a text, first thing you think of, the worst possibilities. Oh no, she's gonna break up with me, oh no, are we gonna fight about something, oh no. First thing, you come, first thing in your head is, there's a problem. So, as you go through your day, you, you, you think about it. it, it distracts you. The, that movie you wanted to watch your friends, is, it, it, it ruined, because the only thing in your head was that text. The, the games you guys play, it ruined, because what's in your head, that text. So my quote for the day was, a pessimist is a man who looks both ways before crossing a one-way street. So the first thing I thought of when I looked at this quote was overthinking. When you, when you uh, look at every single detail and think right away that something bad didn't happen. So overthinking is a very complex topic. It could be a good thing, it could be a bad thing. So I want to tackle this topic with three perspectives. One perspective is as a student when you're taking a test. Another perspective is um, when you're choosing a major. And the third perspective is uh, something more broad, something more abstract about uh, yeah, uh, about life in general and uh, instincts, humanistic instincts. So first, I want to talk about as a student and taking a test. Um, when you t depending on the subject is very tricky. But then, for me, an example for me was when I took a biology class. And then, biology is a very broad topic, so it's kind of hard to study for it because there's a lot of things to talk about. So, whenever before each test, my professor gives me a bunch of chapters to study, and it usually ranges from three to four chapters, which is a lot when it comes to biology. So when when you're so when you're studying for it, you have a huge thick book. And you try to read every single word, every single ch every single detail, because you think it's going to be part of the test. But at the end of the day, it's only a 50-point test, and you're studying three, four chapters, which is about like 50 pages. So it, it doesn't make sense to study every single word. So when I took the test, I realized how that 90% like, of the stuff in the test was not part of the chapters. I'm pretty sure you guys have experienced it before. So me. Overanalyzing, overreacting, cost me. Cost me. It cost me like effort and uh, and wasted the wasted time. So um, the next for in that instance, uh, overthinking was a bad thing. Uh, my next sample was um, when you're choosing a major. A lot of people overthink your major. They think oh. I have to choose the one that earns me the most money, or I want one that my parents chose for me. Like you're overthinking it. But whenever people ask me advice for what major they choose, I always tell them that when you're taking the subject that has something to do with your major, and you enjoy the process of learning, rather than, oh, I need to learn this, I need to learn that, but actually enjoying what you're learning, that's when I tell them that's the major you should choose. So sometimes you don't have to overthink it. Sometimes you have to let it come to you naturally. Because when you're learning something and you're actually enjoying the process, then I feel like it's a successful path to choose. And lastly, I want to talk about something broad, something, something abstract, and that is human instinct. And this is an example for me where actually overthinking might not be that bad. Because when you think about it, when we when we when we drive, like some, something basic as driving, we we are taught that we should expect the worst to happen. We should expect a car going into your lane. You're expected that oh well, that car might actually like uh, like might, uh, might cut you off. Yeah, you should ex you should uh, prepare for that so that you're you're safer. You're a safer driver. Because that, because uh, it's human instinct, survival. You want to ex sometimes expect the worst, even if that's not going to happen. So you survive. You never know it. It might actually happen. So um, I went over three 
well, perspectives when it comes to overthinking. I, I went over as a student taking a test. Second, I went over as uh, choosing a major. And third, um, something as general as a, a driving, like human instinct. Uh, in conclusion, I think there's, a, there's right places and wrong places to overthink. I, I think that when it comes to detail, you shouldn't you shouldn't uh, you shouldn't overthink it. You shouldn't you shouldn't you shouldn't dissect it too much because then, then you might it might uh, it might ruin you. It might inspire uh, it might inspire fear. It might inspire uh, uncertainty. And and at times overthinking could be good because it, it might mean you're surviving. All right, Nathan, let me start with the structural things first. I think it's uh, well organized. You've got a preview. You uh, indicate where you are at any given point of the speech. At the end, there's kind of a summary of what you're talking about. You struggle a little bit at the exit to figure out uh, exactly where to step off, and it feels like you are suddenly realizing, you know what, I didn't really have a purpose statement at the beginning of the speech, and now I need to have that purpose statement. And it sounds like you're kind of waffling a little bit on what point it is you're trying to make. And I think that hurts uh, the impact of the uh, content overall. Uh, the, I thought your first example worked pretty well. Uh, the second and the third ones, they're really abstract and your application, what we're supposed to get from those illustrations, I don't think is as clear. So uh, it seemed like you're thinking, you had the idea, you had a structure, you, you did that, but you've got to kind of remember what's the point that I'm trying to make, and I think that that's uh, one of the problems that you had early in the speech. The presentation issues, most things are, are pretty solid. You've got an energetic voice, there's good variety in your voice. There are a couple of, <coughs> excuse me, a couple of spots where there's some awkward slowing, and it's much more noticeable because you start off so energetic that every time you get stuck a little bit that it's, it's like a re waving a red flag to say, you know, here's an awkward moment because you're not going at the pace that you were before and you're not having the same uh, level of energy. So it sticks out a little bit like a sore thumb. I thought you had some good descriptive gestures while you were speaking, but I'll uh, bet a lot of people will be able to pick it out, uh, the issue that's, uh, uh, that bugs me a little bit and that I think you'll notice on the video when you watch it later. Uh, you've got that piece of paper in your hand and you keep crinkling it and I can hear it over and over and over again. And it was like, that. if there was any anxiety coming out, that's where it was playing with that little piece of paper. So it's probably best to get it out of your hand as quick as possible so that it's not a distraction to you. Um, the other thing that I thought was a little bit odd, it, it, it wasn't too distracting, but it was noticeable, is your body movement, you do all of your speaking uh, you do change the angle of your body, but it's all hip action. It's like you never change the orientation of your body, your full body. It's just you're kind of swinging at the hip, that sort of thing. And that it's probably okay in the first couple of minutes, but after that, it seems like it's you, you're not relaxed. And as a consequence, I think it, it makes you seem uh, more stiff than you would otherwise appear to the audience and uh, less effective. All right. Thank you.